We work with a ton of golfers and at some point in their career, they've had an issue with their shoulder, their elbow or their wrist. And so in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into the anatomy and biomechanics, what they need in their golf swing so that they can stay healthy and keep smashing the ball. Let's get into it. Now on a golf swing, we know that we need hip mobility and we need thoracic mobility. We need to be able to get into our backswing, get back here and then come all the way through the ball, staying, keeping our head down, and then get our follow through. A lot of that, I'm not a golf coach, but a lot of that has to do with thoracic mobility and it has to do with hip mobility. So we need internal and external rotation in the hips. And we also need to be able to rotate and get the shoulder blades down and back in our backswing and then follow through and get our shoulder blade down and back. So we're not taking that motion through our neck. We're not taking that motion through our low back, but then it can also translate too much pressure into our elbow and I'm gonna explain why. My name is Jonathan Rizika. We have five golf courses within a 10 mile radius. So we see a ton of golfers and golf is really a technical sport. And so what we need the body to do, our golfers really wanna dive in and understand what they need to get out of their body, where they need mobility and where they need to do their stability work. We're gonna talk about that in this video, what the anatomy really looks like and why they keep having these injuries that keep popping up. We've had golfers that had it over 12 years. Hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification. We're gonna be putting out content for golfers, the general population, but also a ton for golfers because we see it so much and we have such good success. Now we've gotta look at the body like a pulley system. So we have muscles that are connected with fascia. So we have the bottom of the foot connected to the calf, connected to the hamstrings, to the erectors, all the way up to the top of the forehead. And I'm gonna show you a book view. This is called Anatomy Trends. It came out about 30 years ago where they really show you how we have eight different tracts of tissue. This book's called Anatomy Trains. Instead of cutting off the plantar fascia and the Achilles perpendicular with the bone like this, they actually cut it off. They shaved it off of the bone and they found that the plantar fascia and the calf were connected to each other, connected to the hamstring, to the erectors, all the way up to the top of the forehead. In this picture, they actually show it right on the body and they show you where it comes up and where that slab of tissue is gonna go. And so if we know that all of this is connected together, then we can treat the body like a pulley system and that's how we get great outcomes for our clients. In this one, you can see an illustration of the bottom of the foot connected to the calf, all the way up to the hamstrings, the erectors, and the top of the forehead. And when our body is a pulley system, we are going to have weak links in that chain. And a lot of times we'll have weak links in the chain right here in the calf, sometimes in the hamstring, bottom of the foot, plantar fasciitis. But we can carry this over into the arm as well. This fascial line is the deep front arm line and then the deep back arm line. So we have tissue that's coming all the way across and that's why when we treat this area and the elbow and the wrist, we're actually gonna be working on the thoracic spine as well. We want this chain of tissue to be able to have some give into it so we don't end up having problems in that one area right around the elbow. That's just the weak link in the chain, but we have a pull all the way up here. After looking at that, think about the muscles as like my shirt. We have this chain of tissue. So I come up like this. If I have a pull right here on my shirt, then I'm constantly getting pressure up here where I'm starting to fray those threads. In the opposite way, if I have a bunched up tissue right here, it's pulling up. I'm constantly getting a pull down here at these threads. So what we wanna do is loosen up those lines of tissue. And when we loosen up those lines of tissue, we don't have the weak link in the chain. And we'll talk about exactly how to do that in another video, but understanding what muscles are affected is what's really important. Now looking right here, we have the common extensor tendon. So all these extensors going all the way down into our hand are actually connected up here at the elbow. When somebody has a tennis elbow, golfer's elbow problem, they're gonna end up with irritation and fraying right here at these complexes of tendons. The tendons are bunching up together. They don't have good blood flow to them and we have to loosen that up. So we have to loosen up the muscle belly right here. We loosen up the muscle belly and we stop having such a pull right here on the tendon attachments. We also have the brachioradialis and we have the extensor carpi radialis longus. This is all a jumbled mess of muscles that are stuck together. And so when we're looking at the entire chain of tissue, we need to be thinking about working on the front side and the back side of these muscles because it's gonna be three dimensional. When we wanna get more pressure and more hunkered down stress 
into the shoulder blades. We've got to look at these muscles. We have our mid trap, our low trap. We have our rhomboids, our rotator cuff muscles. All of this stuff needs to move together. We need to be using these muscles together. And if we increase mobility in this area and then put stability behind it, then we're going to put more of our stress here in the back and we take it out of the arm. Another really important thing to think about is do you have problems with other parts of your arm? If you're having an elbow issue or a wrist issue on that side, have you had a previous history of having, having shoulder problems on that side? Most of our clients have. So we're going to look at all of the issues that you're having in that arm and then we want to treat it bilaterally when you're in a pain process when you're having pain you're having inflammation kick up we want to loosen up 80 percent on the side that's affected but then 20 percent on the other side and we really hunger in this proximal area are we loosening up those muscles and are we using them effectively to take stress off of the chain, the area in the chain that's really irritated. We want to do that on a consistent basis, but you need to make notes about that stuff because we're going to treat above and below and 360 degrees around that elbow and around that wrist. And we're going to look for muscle bellies. We're going to loosen that stuff up. The main issue is that we need a glide of tissue. We need everything moving around and gliding. We shouldn't have a weak link in that area. When you have a weak link, it's like a frayed rope. It's like that, that tendon is pulled apart and it's not getting the opportunity to cinch up and scar down. So the first two weeks, we're actually going to take off of our activity that causes us problems and we're going to allow that inflammation process to take place. We're going to heal that tissue, get scar tissue to lay down, which is a positive in the first two weeks. We get that scar tissue to lay down and then we'll get into that area. But while we're doing it, we actually want to break up tissue here in the forearm, loosening it up. Whether we have a wrist problem or an elbow problem, we're going to loosen up the tissue on the back side of the forearm. We're going to loosen up the tissue on the front side of the forearm. And then we're going to go above and below right here. We have another video that we're going to post on exactly how we do that stuff. But we got to understand the anatomy and what we're trying to get out of it so that you can get long-term outcomes from your intervention. After the first two weeks and you've gotten that mobility, you're moving around, you're not having pain, we've got to be thinking about are we using all the muscles that we're supposed to use to get us through our full golf swing? So are we getting all the thoracic mobility and movement through our thoracic spine to take stress off that area? And then do we have stability between the shoulder blades? Are we doing exercises? On the channel, we have plenty of videos on exactly how we activate those muscles. So we should be doing exercises for our shoulder blades, for shoulder blade stability, but then we to move down into the hips. If you need a video on exactly what we do for the hips, then make a comment, let us know. We'll put together a video on how we do hip mobility and what our warmups are with our golfers and how they get these good results because they are working on it on a consistent basis. They golf so much that they've got to work on mobility and stability in the hips and the thoracic spine and do it consistently. After you've developed your hips, if this is something that just keeps coming back, then we need to find a golf coach, a swing coach that'll actually get in there and show you exactly what the swing looks like. I know what you need for the swing. I know where we need mobility. I've worked with a golfer, one that's playing, playing golf at Vanderbilt right now. And I know talking to the coach, we're looking for the same things. We are looking for that mobility through the thoracic spine, stability through the shoulder blades, and then that hip drive. But Developing the hip mobility, developing stability and hip drive behind it, those are really important components that you work with a physical therapist, a personal trainer, or your own routine by using the resources that you have, learning from people and developing those areas, but then getting with a really solid golf coach and swing coach that can show you how to utilize those muscles within your swing, that's gonna be really important. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the videos on exactly how we attack these injuries, how we fix them for people and make sure that you check the video on the screen where it's going to go through exactly what we do for upper extremity injuries. I'll see you in the next video. Get mobile and stay active.